name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we come before Christ Jesus this day, our Saviour and our King, to place our lives afresh before him, to give thanks for his steadfast love for us, and to pray for strength to follow him on the way. We often are aware that so often in our lives, we fall away from his love when for our thoughts, words and actions, we take a path that leads us into sin. Let us ask for mercy and forgiveness for those times of failing, that his mercy and forgiveness may place us back on the path of righteousness. Lord, you were born from the Virgin Mary for the salvation of the world. Lord, have mercy. Christ, who died on the hot cross to heal the wounds of sin, Christ, have mercy. Lord, you rose from the dead to open for us the gates of heaven. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. So let's pray. Almighty ever living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. 
So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. The word of the Lord. The response to the song, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. As it was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colosseans. Give thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. The Father has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. Christ is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Christ is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in Christ all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at Jesus, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you be seated, please? When you look at our history and you look at our modern times, there's a real sort of uh, fascination with borders, with sovereignty. With, uh, with how we rule our various nations of the earth, something which uh, gets us now. There's a real thing about having where you have a monarch or you're a republic, or you have a kind of a bit of both, or however, however you work yourself. There's also great talk about borders. We know what's going on in the borders between Russia and Ukraine, so sadly, and in other places throughout our world, and indeed, there's talk about borders in the United Kingdom. Will Scotland be cut off and drift away? Who knows? It's something which consumes us uh, in our political lives, in our social lives, and then eventually in our historical lives. The sense of sovereignty, who we are, who we should let in, who's allowed here, who's not allowed here, how we should work, can often become a subject which can create the worst of humankind but also to be the best of humankind. Let us welcome, let us draw people into our land and give them shelter and safety. Christ the King comes really at a strange time. It's a, the sense of the sovereignty of Jesus Christ can often be drawn into what we understand, that is, cut and dry, black and white borders. And we see Jesus as almost an arbitrator of the nations. But it's not quite like that, sorry to say. <laughs> it's not quite like that. Today we come for Christ, the King of the universe. We come to think of Christ in a very different way. Yes, he has the power of justice. He can heal the sick, can raise the dead, and he can judge your sins and lead you to paradise. But he is a king not of borders, not of lands, but of something far greater. For us as Christians, of course, we see Jesus, the kingship of Jesus, as something very different than just a political thing. It reaches further. It reaches far further. We see the kingdom of God, Christianity, it's not something belonging to one part of the church. We see it as the church universal throughout time, throughout space. As a priest, I, I tallied it up the other day, thought I would do it, because I'm going to talk about it now. I have celebrated Mass, I think, I might have missed a couple out but in 47 different churches and chapels. And after this, I'm off to St Mary's Lehrer, which I would actually count as half a church because they only built half of it and the money ran out in about 1890. So we'll call it 46 and a half, never mind. But I reckon I've celebrated the Mass, the Eucharist, in 47 churches and chapels, not to mention homes that I've been into, some of your homes, and we've celebrated the Eucharist there. There's lots of places. And as you know, I've done it upside, the right way up, and I've done it the other way up. That's not to count the number of places that I've been to where the Eucharist has been celebrated. In countries throughout Europe and throughout the world. Well, I've no idea what they're saying, but I know what's happening. And some of those grand communities, the, large, the larger gatherings with hundreds and hundreds there, and some of the smaller ones with just a couple of three, they all have the same thing in common. Whether an inner city 
well, we're not in a city. Well, within a city-ish community like this, or in a tiny little shack in the middle of nowhere, in a sheep farming community. People come, and they come and gather in the same way, bringing before God, before Jesus, as we do now, what we hold in our hearts, the things that we want help for, the things that scare us, the things that we worry about. We come before God sometimes thinking he's the best thing since sliced bread. And we sometimes gather before God thinking, why is he letting this happen to me? And we often come before God because our hearts are full of thanks that something has happened during that week before when we have seen Christ at work through words and through actions. As a priest, it has been a privilege, I'm well, not finishing, so far it's been a privilege, <laughs> sadly a lot of farewell speech, so far to come and be part of these gatherings of Christ's people. Different accents, different languages, but still the one kingdom Trusting in the Saviour. Still in every place, reaching out, receiving the same Christ that for the last 2,000 years we've been reaching out to as his kingdom and will until he comes. The kingdom, the kingship of Christ that we come here today to acknowledge and give thanks for is that kingship that means no matter where we are geographically and where we are in our lives he is there for us with love beyond our comprehension In the Gospel, which I've just read, you know that's from the crucifixion. That moment of the crucifixion where Jesus has been nailed to a cross in the worst possible place. Really, that was the worst thing that can ever happen to you, I suppose. He's in the worst place. Nailed to a cross, stripped naked and raised up high for the world to laugh and jeer and scoff at him. And alongside those two poor wretched criminals nailed and drawn up with him. And at a point when you or I would not think of anyone else but the agony that we would be going through, Jesus listens to those around him. He listens to the thief saying, you have done no wrong, I have. And even then, the king of the universe, the true king, cannot be stopped loving, healing, and bringing people to him. Today, he says, you will be with me in paradise. That's the king we follow. That is a king without borders. That is a king without time or distance. That is a king who reaches into our hearts. And loves, and loves, and loves.
Next week, dear friends, we start our Advent journey. I hear that certain cathedrals in parts of this land have already got their Christmas trees up. <laughs> we won't, not for another couple of weeks. Shame on them, shame on them. But next week, we will start on our Advent journey again. As we did last year, we're not quite so uh, carefree. Will we begin to approach that moment when the king was revealed in the birth in Bethlehem? The one that the wise men, remember them? A long time ago now, wasn't it? They died, came and knelt before and paid homage to a baby, a child. Next week we begin to see and to remind ourselves that the light shines into the world. Which light? The light of the King. The one greater than David. The one who came into our world to love and still is in our world loving. Let's get ready for the King. And let us as we begin our Advent preparations. Take the opportunity to say to him once more, Here I am, Lord. I bring to you all that I have. Help me, guide me, love me. They'll be doing it all over the world. That's a good thing reassures us that the love of Christ can never be diminished. He has come and he is here and one day he will come to you in glory. My brothers and sisters, we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I ask you these questions. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary? He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Amen. You believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our faith gives us confidence to pray to God our Father. We pray for the church throughout the world for those of the kingdom of Christ, that we may find confidence through his love for us. We pray for those who guide and lead us in the faith, for Justin Francis, for Bartholomew, the leaders of reformed churches, that together we may help in word and action and in prayer reveal the light of Christ in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who turn away from Christ, for those who reject God, for those who take a path of their own. We pray that they may feel in their lives the presence of Christ afresh, and may in these weeks and months to come look out for him with hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our communities struggling with debt, finance, with rising bills, for those who are finding family difficulties, personal relationships being stretched because of financial problems. 
We pray for all who are living on our streets at this time. The weather grows colder and wetter. And we give thanks for all who reach out to help them in need, for those who feed and for those who listen and help sort people's problems out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this church, this parish, and our Christian community in which we live, so that the common confidence we have in Christ Jesus as our King and our Saviour may draw us together and give us confidence to speak to the world of him. We pray for our families and those whom we share our daily lives with, for the messages shared, for the concerns offered. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those struggling with illness, injury, isolation or sorrow. For those in hospital, for those who are at home, for those who have lost their way forward in life. We pray that the healing love of Christ Jesus, our Saviour, may pour afresh into their lives and bring them hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the departed, for Thelma Paul, for those whom we love and yet see no more, for those whose years mind falls during this week. As we offer the departed the loving arms of Christ Jesus, our King and Saviour, we pray for ourselves too that when our time comes, his mercy, his love and forgiveness may welcome us into paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we offer ourselves to God, placing before our King all those things that we bring here in our hearts, seeking comfort, guidance, and the thanksgivings that we offer. We pray alongside one another with all Christian people throughout the world this day, surrounded by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Kingdom of God, in this world, praying to Christ before us. Hear us, Lord, as we offer our lives to you in prayer. Read our hearts well and answer these prayers in ways we know and in ways we cannot understand. We call upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, in Christ, this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed, anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and by making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and from all that he hath created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that for the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Bartholomew, Mark, Anne, Mary of the Cross, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your, with your bishops, clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing through their parting from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. In the presence of Christ, let us call upon our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. Only say the word, and I shall be.
led us to pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying and obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Sunny. Oh, I can see it now. There we go. I'll stand in the shadows and I can see it. That's better. Um, here we go. We've got, uh, I did promise you, Advent is uh, just around the corner next week. Um, can you believe it, eh? Um, you wouldn't know that in a cathedral not far from here. If you want to know about that, speak to some people that went to Truro yesterday. Right. Um, <laughs> you've got two things there. First, on the back of the sheet, the beginning of our Advent uh, even song, even songs where we've got... Uh, we are the first to host them, so it's St. Bartholomew, St. Peter's, St. Francis, and then they get together at St. Gabriel's on Sunday evenings at 5.30. So, um, do come along and for our evening worship, well that sounds very banal, doesn't it? Our evening worship service, no, 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 for even song benediction, do come and join us uh, as we pray as, uh, together. I spoke about the Kingdom of God. Let's get together with our neighbours just up the road and around us and spend our journey towards Advent with them. So do come to that. And then at the back, you'll start to see the publicity has been going up. There are a pile of these at the back. There's loads of them. These are invitations for you to take, to give to people for Christmas, amongst other things. Um, they're effectively the posters and the publicity that, that, that you'll see. And you'll see at the bottom it says, I would love you to come and join us as we celebrate Christmas in our wonderful church community. Happy Christmas, and there's a space for you to put your name, if you're brave enough, I hope you are, to put it on the bottom there. To take these, I'll print them off as we need them, when they run out there'll be more, but to take those and use them as invitations to give out to people you meet. We've got five weeks till Christmas, plenty of people you know, um, hand them out and uh, invite them along. And there's the two, as you can see, we've got the Christmas services on there, and we've got the Wednesday the 21st is when we're doing our big family one. We're doing the big family one and also Christmas carol service combined. Um, it seems to be quite a popular time so far now, I've been asking around in the community. Oh, that's good, they go when they say Wednesday evening. Um, there's nothing else going on on Wednesday night. There's no Strictly, there's no celebrities being chucked out of the jungle. They've all gone by then. Um, <laughs> being strange having Christmas at the weekend. Right, Wednesday evening, the 25th. Oh, it's the sh shortest day of the year, isn't it? Well, that's right, yeah. It's the winter solstice. We'll get over that one. Um, but on that evening, and we've invited groups, there will be different groups and different organisations coming in to see and take part as well. All the details are on those leaflets. Pick them up as invitations and take them with you. Okay, and I'll so we'll also be emailing the whole lot to you so that when you run out of these at home, you can email them to all of your friends. Ah, there we go, send to all and uh, get them out there along with other things. Okay, we've got the Christmas Tree Festival is back after a break of four years. That makes it sound quite, uh, quite fun. Uh, so we've already got Christmas trees being uh, put together by various groups and by ourselves. Don't worry, we'll be asking for help to put the uh, ridiculously small one at the front up. Don't worry, we'll ask for that. That'll be the second uh, Saturday of uh, Advent. Want that by? You can see the Christmas tree festival starts on the 11th, so I'll get in touch with you before there. We've got nice new ladders, so they're nice and safe. Um, so we're all on track. Okay, folks? You look so excited, it's untrue. You really look so excited. I do know there's that moment when I look and see, right, let's plan Christmas. Firstly, we get all the complaints through. Oh, I don't like that. I don't know what you're doing there. And then we get on with it. So, are we okay? Yes? I know it feels a bit of a drag this year, doesn't it? You can't afford the crackers anymore. The turkey's going to cost you 60 quid and you won't be able to get it because it's all been put down because of bird flu. So, what are we going to have? Um, but the one thing we have got, of course, is the real thing. We have the real deal here for Christmas, don't we? Without this bit, that bit don't work. So, you've got the flyers. Start handing them out. Leave them in places, some places anyway. And let's start to build ourselves up. Okay, folks, 
that's it. Time to send you off on a lovely, beautiful, sunny and cold day. What's going on in the world? Well, we'll soon find out once we leave here. I'm off to St Mary's Lara. There we go. Another Christian community gathered together um, who will be offering themselves to God. And throughout the world, people today have placed themselves before Jesus, the King of the universe. Ooh, love today. Let's get you going. Would you stand, please? The Lord be with you. Direct your people, O Lord, we pray, with heavenly instruction, that by avoiding every evil and pursuing all that is good, they may, may earn not your anger, but your unending mercy and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. into our hearts so that as we have known the incarnation of your dear son Jesus Christ by the message of an angel so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord Amen